Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Again, we're going to have a very exciting hour at this point in time. And uh, my guest will be, uh, as you know, my, my, my sidekick for many, many years here on the show, the Oregon Voters Digest. Bob Williams is no surprise to you. You know Bob. Bob, how you doing? Real well, Bruce. How Fan, are you? Fantastic. And then naturally our keynote speaker. How about that? Keynote speaker. I love uh, it. For, for communicated this time around is Dr. Harris, Dr. Cynthia Harris. As you know, what we have been doing, we've been trying to educate you about our educational center, uh, situation that we have here in the state of Oregon, especially with the uh, the advent of the uh, the first chief education officer selected by that was recently selected by the governor. And uh, so this is our way, if you will, of educating not only you, the public, but also uh, actually giving Dr. Dr. Crew, I guess, Dr. Crew, Dr. Rudy Crew, the opportunity to get a feel for what the what what was going on in the largest district in the state of Oregon, and uh, and that's with a, a renowned educator in Dr. Cynthia Harris. As you know, she was brought in here by the then Superintendent Vicky. Uh, and uh, uh, she brought, was brought in, and she was an assistant superintendent working at administration. And later on, as you know, she went to Jefferson High School, and then subsequently she was she was laid off. She was fired, for that matter. And we went through and we went through that. We had two shows prior to that. Uh, first off, was basically we had an opportunity to meet with her and talk about her background, her educational background, uh, and that's very, very important. And in the second show, we talked in this issue of why she was fired. We did that. And in this particular show, we're going to talk about her tenure and time in the administration of the Portland Public Schools. And then next week, we're going to talk about her time and tenure at Jefferson High School. So I think it's going to be well rewarding, and I would encourage you to to pay attention and listen, if you will. I'm not trying to dictate anything. And then, and if you think this has merit, to to uh, uh, if you will, email this to or get this information out to the rest of the public, because we do have a very serious problem here in the state of Oregon as it relates to education. With the low at the totem pole, and uh, the governor and the legislature. By the way, it wasn't just the governor who made the selection. The legislature they took a very bold move in terms of what can we do about our graduation, about our dropout rates, and on and on and on. And so I think it's very important that this is an this is an all-out effort for all of us, for that matter, especially the taxpayers, because we you know in this particular case the dollars, et cetera, et cetera, and the commitment has to be made. So with that, I'm just going to go on right into the show. But prior to that, I think we need to at least acknowledge the fact that today is Father's Day. Yeah. And we want to make sure we, we, we let people know about and, and say something about Father's Day. On my end of the table, I'll just say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. And also mothers, too, because mothers are our fathers nowadays. Because as you know, the, um, a number of these fathers, uh, male, if you will, are fatherless, if you will, in the, in the, in the family. And the other is that I'd like to also say Happy Father's Day to McCoy Academy and Becky Black and Becky uh, and, and my dear friend who's not here with us anymore, Cy. Uh, but anyway, Happy Father's Day to them because they too are, are reaching out. They've got a private school mm -hmm. and they have been working very hard uh, around the district and outside of the district uh, trying to get those fathers with their GEDs and the like and whatever. So again, Happy Father's Day, Becky, and to your crew who have been, been sensational in that arena. And uh, so then now I, I'd like to sort of pass it over to Bob. Bob, what do you think? Father's Day. Well, Happy Father's Day, by the hey, way. Hey, same to you. And I've, I've been online and uh, texting and tweeting to all my family and friends, uh, wishing them a Happy Father's Day and to some of the uh, mothers out there who's doing it alone. Okay. You know, who happens to have double duty, I yeah. call it, father and mother. Mm -hmm. So they get two days. And, you know, um, as we look at as we look at our children, you know, we have to begin to think about the fact that what we do impacts them. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to impact them in a positive manner, we have to show them the love and respect we have for each other. Yeah. And one of the ways of doing that is by the brothers getting together and, you know, coalescing together either in church or wherever you choose in one's home and let the kids see 
that you can get together and you don't have to curse, you don't have to swear at each other. You can talk and uh, coalesce and have a good time and show what fathers do. Okay, good. And then you, Dr. Harris, you know, you've been in the education arena and especially since your last stint at, at Jefferson High School. Yeah. Uh, well, we're going to wish you a happy Father's well, Day. Well, I'm going to receive you're it. Very, <laughs> very much involved with, uh, with all those youth, if you will, and both mothers and fathers for that matter. And so what do you, what's your reaction to the Father's Day? Well, first of all, I'd like to acknowledge my own father. Gilbert Harris, um, five children. We we're all fairly well educated, so they did a lot of good work. My parents, so that, and then I have a few brother-in-laws that are fathers, and I have nephews uh, that are fathers. So I just like to acknowledge all of them, part of the Harris family. So I just like to acknowledge any father who's mentoring, who's helping, who's providing that extra support in the community, because we know it makes a difference. So. Just happy Father's Day to each and every one of them. Okay. I got to make you got to make a little note to Father's Day to Jefferson High School while you were there. Exactly. I know you had the boys and you yeah. had the girls. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I, I'd like to wish all the parents a happy yeah. Father's Day that participate, all the mentoring programs, all the support programs, all of those things make a difference. So good. yeah. Well, I mean, that's great. That's great. Okay, good. Fine. Now that we've gotten this, I, I might mention also too that uh, I'd heard today. Today, I'm sure it'll probably be in the paper and the media tomorrow, heavy. But Rodney King, as you know, from California, who was uh, who was basically beaten, if you will, by uh, Portland, uh, 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 L.A. Police. L.A. Police. LA police. LA police. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. LA police. But it looked like this is an issue all over the country. For That's that it. Yeah. You know yeah. But he but he was found dead, I guess, in the pool, mm -hmm. if you will. And so anyway, we'll probably know more if you will want the autopsy, you know, this, that, and the other, and right. tomorrow. But Rodney King, he was really a troubled person. But he was a very kind guy. He was a big guy, but he was very kind. And he would always make the statement about the fact that I hope people would get together. Why can't we all just, no, get, just along? get along? And that's a very interesting piece. So we should know more about that piece. But Rodney King now has passed away. He was, he was found dead in his pool in California. Okay, now let's just get on with our program here at this point in time. Now, Dr. Harris, as you know, what we left off was the fact that um, uh, we went through this whole business about why they left, uh, why they relieved you, if you will, of your job. But now we want to take advantage of the opportunity and again and give the public the opportunity to get a feel for your stay while you were an administrator mm -hmm. in, in home office, if you were, as an assistant superintendent. An area superintendent. Area, area mm -hmm. superintendent. Why don't you go back again and kind of talk about, one, what was your job description in that arena? Mm -hmm. what, you, what were you responsible for? And then we can just get into the activities that while you were there and some of the okay. pluses, the minuses, <laughs> and et cetera. Okay? okay, so overall responsibilities was for the Jefferson Cluster, which I think there were like maybe nine or ten schools, and the Southwest Cluster, which was about the same. So it was about perhaps 22 schools that I had full authority of oversight for the principals for the total operation of those schools and setting forth direction on how these schools were. We looked at testing, the staff development, personnel issues, and just overall direction for uh, providing guidance for those schools. So that was the job, that was the task. What were some of the issues at that point of, um, of concern that you had to, well, to try to address? Well, what I did notice right away was the schools were very different, the Southwest schools and the um, Jefferson way? clusters. Just in how they moved, how they, uh, how they flowed. So I actually spent more time with the Jefferson cluster early on. I found it easier to work with the schools in the Southwest. They were more pliable, I could pull things together very quickly. And, I enjoyed everything, but I felt like it was a little harder working in the, the Jefferson cluster. Uh, of course, you have different kinds of problems in the Jefferson cluster, different kind of parent involvement, um, different issues in terms of the curriculum, in terms of the environment and the structure. So it's just, it was just different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, um, uh, as, you, as you did your day-to-day -day work, mm -hmm. um, how were, how were you received by the principals and, um, and, and that's well. a really hard question because I think coming in newly you don't always know that question the answer to that question because everybody is just being nice to you so you don't know how they're being received but I felt I had a pretty good relationships with most of the principals and I to this day you know I find them to be very kind and wonderful I think um, I enjoyed the staff development of the principals. I enjoyed working with them. So I enjoyed that a great deal, that part of the job. Um, getting back to um, Jefferson High School, I think the most challenging was the high school itself. And at that time, Leon Dudley was brought in from Dallas, Texas to run the school. And, and it, it, was, it was just challenging on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, you know, another point I'd like to ask is that, is that, was that, that you know, we had a very active school board, if you will, 
and and was the school basically they were the sort of like the the civilian administrator if you will yeah. and I'm basically responsible mm -hmm. for the Portland School District, but were they sort of in sync if you will in sync with the issues that were out there in your particular area of responsibility? I would say at that time, yes, I had several school board members that. Um, when you said that time, about approximately. Well, you remember, I came in 2006, and I can't believe it myself, but that's six years ago. Wow. <laughs> and okay. um, I was just realizing I've been here in Oregon for six years. Six so, years. Yeah. Wow. So that's a while. And, um, yeah, I think when I came, um, I was well-received. As a matter of fact, I would say my first three years here were great. It wasn't until that fourth year that it became very bumpy. In and, the fourth year, what was that about? Um what was it about? When you moved to Jefferson? Yeah, saying? I think the, the first... second year at Jefferson? My first two years at Jefferson, I think, were really great. I mm -hmm. had numerous articles, lots of support. I had financial support from alumni and the associations in the schools. Many foundations supported me. So I think those first years were fine. I think as we went deeper into the issues and administration, superintendent changed. Therein lied the challenge. Mm -hmm. So I would say... Um, when a lot of change happens, that's the challenge. You know, how do you maintain and how do people make changes if they want to change without um, railroading people, you know, mm -hmm. without having conversation? I would say the process and procedures were not clear. That would be one of the huge things I would say about the Oregon schools, systemic, how they do the evaluations, how they mentor, and how they make those kinds of moves. I would say those are their challenges. You know, I've said this before, so it won't, uh, for those that's listening for the first time, uh, viewers for the first time, uh, it might shock them. But I've always said that the one thing that is, has always appeared from someone that sits outside of the structure mm -hmm. is that for some reason, they've always looked at how do we close Jefferson. Oh, okay. <laughs> and the more I look at this, the more I see that the reason for it is because PCC has nowhere else to go. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, they have taken over everything in the neighborhood. And Portland uh, Community College. Portland yeah, Community right. College, right. Uh, Cascade Campus. And so if they close uh, Jefferson, look at the, they have a, what, what is that, a two block by one block yeah. Uh, yeah. area there that becomes theirs to develop, they can put three or four buildings there. Knock down Jefferson, they have three, now the campus grows. Uh, I've also looked at what they're doing to the, what's happening in this community. I've, I went to the University of Portland, so I, I came here in 72. So I saw this community as a black community. Uh, I, now when I come through, I don't see a lot of black people. I see people riding their bikes, uh, driving their hybrid cars, walking the neighborhood with their dogs, and old establishments like uh, Paul Knoll's uh, place, uh, Mr. Browning's uh, place, and a number of other places have been closed down because new people have moved into the mm -hmm. area. And I also see Emmanuel taking over a large part. Mm -hmm. Do you, did you Was that part of the discussion? Of that? Yeah. Was yeah. that part of the discussion with, in, in the administration with you guys? Well, I don't know that that was part of the discussion, but I remember like a few years ago, we were looking at renovating Jefferson High School. A lot of us went to Washington, D.C., and we were working with an architect um, to renovate. So I can kind of see that. And um, I guess the thing that's hard for me is it, it seems like to me if that's really where you want to go, why not go ahead and have those conversations and just redesign it and, and connect it to the PCC and just make it part of Part Make it of the a city. high school part of piece. Part, of, part of the college, yeah. Right. yeah. You know, I want, again, we get back to this other piece. And then when thinking about um, when you were, again, in administration, were there ever discussions, like from Vicky, for instance, just like uh, uh, just like Governor Kitzhopper is doing to, to crew, mm -hmm. he's been pretty well prioritizing specifically this is what he's going to be looking for in terms of outcome for hiring him. Okay. Um, what about Vicky? Yeah, she I think she really talked thing? to me about community engagement. She talked to me about academic achievement, teacher development. So those are the things that there wasn't that conversation on closure. But then I don't know if that would have, I would have been a person that would have that conversation with because I noticed at the girls' school, I noticed that Bonnie, the principal, she said right in the paper she never knew they were going to close the school. It was amazing to her. And you were responsible for those two? Well, this was after the it, Yeah, this was yeah, after this the fact. Was, so I'm not sure that those are the kind, there's that, not that level of integrity. It's like what's underneath the commitment that's mm -hmm. underneath the commitment that's underneath. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if we're privy to those, that level of uh, conversation. And you just have to take it by faith or 
are like me. Once it happens, you have to reflect back two years and said, were they saying something that I didn't hear mm -hmm. that was given that direction? Because I don't think they're having a, a over-the-board conversation. We're planning to close the school in five years, and these are the steps. I think that would be uh, show a lot of integrity to do it that way. What was the purpose? Let me one more thing. Yeah. What was the purpose, first off, for establishing a boys and girls school within the Jefferson Well, you have to remember when I came to Oregon, that was already in play. I think Aurora had already had the position. I worked with Barbara Adams to hire the Young Men's Academy, and I think Mr. Dudley was already uh, appointed as principal. So that whole piece was already in play. I did a lot of the outreach to help, you know, get enrollment for the Young Men's Academy. But Aurora had done a fabulous job, and she's assistant superintendent now in the Seattle schools, as far as I know. And she was an intern to Vicki and was appointed to the girls' school and did a great job. It, a lot of the really great scores that support an undergirded Jefferson High School came from the Young Women's Academy. They were doing a wonderful job. Well supported, the parents were really there. It was amazing to me that that school could close and there wasn't as even a huge fight about it, you well, know. They didn't, they, it, it wasn't a, a large uh, public act by the, by the school board or, the, uh, or anyone else. I mean, uh, they mentioned it. Uh, if it's not on the news, if it's not in the Oregonian a lot, people miss it. And if they miss it, yeah, and, and, they miss it. And when and when they missed it, it was over. Yeah. And the next thing they you know, you know, and I was at the graduation this year. I was surprised at how many people were getting For 2012. scholarships. 2012. How many of those? It was 91 or 92 people graduating at Jefferson. At Jefferson from the. Uh, I guess the last year, the Boys Academy, last mm -hmm. year, the Girls Academy, and Jefferson High School itself. And of that, I was, some, I was just amazed at how many of them were Samoan, uh, uh, I say Spanish uh, speaking, mm -hmm. uh, uh, white, from, yeah. Asian, and then well, here we come. You know, and it was, but how many of them were getting scholarships? And that was the thing that really impressed me. Mm -hmm. Of that 90, I would say at least at least 25 to 30 percent of them got scholarships somewhere. Wow, that's awesome. And what awesome. about the percentage breakdown of those groups that you just mentioned? Well, I didn't keep a tally, but but it was uh, it was uh, it was pretty even. Pretty even. Yes. So and we have a young man that's going to be going to be out, outstanding, I think, as a dancer. Uh, he did a dance there, and I mean. He's going to be outstanding. I wish I could remember his name. I think I know who you're talking about. Um, and, but that's the thing that was never broadcast when they were talking about the negatives at Jefferson and, and all of the things that were going on there. They never talked about the fact of how many kids were leaving there with scholarships and going on to four-year four -year schools. But what and about the other schools in the district? You, you made mention about, uh, you said 90-some kids yeah, were not, well, graduated, right? Well, Clackamas had about 500. <laughs> Seniors that were graduating? I think so. Oh, okay. It was uh -huh. 400 something, not, close to 500. Uh, I was down in California, they had 495 leaving their mm -hmm. school. So you can, for some reason, the kids are not going into Jefferson. They're going elsewhere, and the question is why? Mm, that's a very good question. Well, during your tenure, <laughs> well, one your time, thing, um, what do you think? I think there's never been a closed enrollment at Jefferson. You can always go wherever. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. when you have a system like that, you have things closed. There's been a lot of work around the boundaries. But when it really gets down to Jefferson, you never really tighten the boundaries. And as long as you leave it open, mm -hmm. people can lobby to bring those kids in, or you can say they can have choice. But when you have that, then you, you won't have a solid group of students right. from which to work. And so if your, your goal is to close it, you keep the boundaries open, and pretty mm -hmm. soon, it's, it's, I see it's a two-edged sword. You can keep it open, and then you can say to the staff, well, if you can't make these numbers, we have to, we don't have to close right. the school. So in your opinion, now this is your My opinion, opinion. Your opinion <laughs> telling, should we have a closed system where the kids have to go to the respective schools? Well, you know, I was uh, thinking, about thinking about the show from the last time, um, and I was thinking about um, 
You know, how do we make something better? Mm -hmm. Well, if you've had something that hasn't worked for a long time, I don't think you can make it better in two years, three years, four years, or five years. You have to have a tight consistency for a long time to bring it up to the other schools. So I think with all the changes that go on at Jeff, it's a sure way to close the school. There's no way to be successful with continuous change of administration, programs, design, and not a willingness to be strong and firm about the boundaries. There's no way you can be successful. You know, uh, you know, on that same note. For a period of time, I think you right. can have these quick fixes and you can right. televise them, oh, this is great. But if you go deep inside of the core of that program, is it really great? Or are you making it look that way so that you then can have time to do what you need to do? If you really want to close the school, then two, three years down the road, we'll see it going, we'll see it closing. But wasn't that not the, hopefully the communication of, in, in administration <laughs> to the board, uh, they, they, they having all these problems, were they discussing this? Because we, we, from the public standpoint, it was always just sort of in a, a maze. What's, what was going on? We're still looking at major failures and and, un and graduates and all. Well, What's one the of the things that I can say. Uh, well, yeah, I was going to. Yeah. Well, I want you to go ahead. And I, I was going to say. Uh, I, I, when, when you were there, I began to get more involved with Jefferson. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I can honestly say is that in the past, when I would go in there, there would be kids in the hall. There would be loud. It would be loud. It would be, uh, you know, ridiculous. While she was there. People went to where they were supposed to go, mm -hmm. and they did it in a in a respectful manner, mm -hmm. you know. And but that was not only her; that was the staff. Mm -hmm. The staff was laughing, joking with the kids, made them feel like they should be there. I did my student teaching, my student observing, I should say, when I was at the University of Portland at Jefferson, mm -hmm. and that made me. And from what I saw, I went, I'm going into business somewhere. <laughs> Who was the principal when you were there? Uh, I'm not going to call his name. <laughs> oh, I will not call his name. Oh, you think? Well, he was a good guy. The coach. I'm not saying. I said the coach. Okay. He's the coach? Yeah. Okay, what's his name? I don't know. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay, okay. Could you but, forget my name, too? Yeah. But, you know, again, again like, I, I like what Bob said. But I again, like what Bob said, too. But at the same time, did not that principal contact a person like you in terms of these are some of the problems we're having? And then did you not have discussion in administration? Well, you know, coming your, into your, uh, Jefferson, superior. I wasn't totally naive. I read every article that I could get and every report and... It's, it's been a school that has been troubled for a long time, mm -hmm. and they've been trying different things and doing different things. And then for a period of time, I think you can see there were 22 principals that had been in there. <laughs> and the one thing that I keep seeing as the issue, which would be different in other school districts, is the staff always stays the same, mm -hmm. the people that are not achieving, but you move the, the top. And you bring these people in, and when they give you the feedback, then they move those people, and they, you leave the staff the mm -hmm. same. Wow. It's impossible to wow. change a system that you have no authority and the unions are so tight and you can't move any of these people and then those same people can talk about you. Mm -hmm. You are trying to make some moves but those teachers or staffers can talk about you and the people are working around the administrator, talking to the teachers of the community instead of having a leadership where the leadership has the authority to give direction to manage. Mm -hmm. Even the business manager, she reported downtown instead of to the principal. So mm -hmm. as long as you have those kind of dysfunctionalities mm -hmm. and then Jefferson is different from the other schools and how you manage it mm -hmm. and you can get contracts without going to the principal you go directly to the superintendent I think that's a problem mm -hmm. and I think when schools run that way it's dysfunctional from the gate from the gate right. and if people in your community have more authority and power over the your school than you do, that's problematic as far as I can see it. And no one can be successful. We can woo this person for a period of time, but as soon as that person begins to pick up some authority, then you're going to do the same thing. And the fact that there were 22 before me. And how uh, many years? And a, it's a period of years. It's not that many years. No, about 10 years. Yeah, yeah, it's not that many years. It, it can't well, be maintained. Years. So, you know, it's just problematic at mm -hmm. best. But you know, as I look back, I'm throwing Bob in there too. I listen to the Bob frustration. I listen to the frustration mm -hmm. about Jeff. You always come back to Jeff, but mm -hmm. as an administrator, you had responsibility for all these other schools, as if to say they were doing well. But only Jeff was sitting out there. No, I don't think problem. I don't think every school were was they doing the well. Same problems or what? Well, I don't think every school was doing well. well you, you look at a school as a system, right? Okay. So each school has a program. You have right. a site plan, and then you're working with the principal. So everybody's uh, working on that. And I think there were some things that were doing moving very well about Jeff. You have the dance program there that was moving very well. You have um, 
a science and math piece that um, was going along very well. There's some great teachers there and there's some great things. But I think the children in the past that have been there have been very challenging. Mm -hmm. And I think SEI has done a fine job in terms of handling some of those problems. A lot more communication probably between the programs can happen. It's just some problems there that you need to work on. Mm -hmm. And I just think working together you can make it happen. But when you have a system where people work with the different parts and mm -hmm. it's not um, moving together, therein lies the issue. Mm -hmm. But as an administrator, while you in the administrator mm -hmm. sitting down at, at the office and there with the superintendent. Oh, I, oh, I was like sitting down? Yeah, you, <laughs> 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 are, are you, if I were to ask you what percentage of your time you had to spend, you spent with Jefferson and talking to issues. You mean when I was the area superintendent? When you were area superintendent. What percentage of the time you had to? I would say probably 20%, 20 percent, quite a bit of time, or, or a little more, depending on what the issues were at the time. Okay. okay. And then remember, if you remember, we were trying to put the boys' school in, and Mr. Dudley was kind of struggling along. But you know what I did find out by stepping in behind Mr. Dudley that he understood the issues, and he knew what he needed to do. It was just somehow challenges. But when I sat where he sat, I would say a lot of his concern and complaints would be the same concerns and complaints that I would have. Mm -hmm. So. We, we evaluate it the same way, and it's the implementation and the support that comes for the implementation that therein lies the issue. Mm -hmm. So anybody's there, if they would be honest, they would have the similar mm -hmm. concerns, mm -hmm. and their evaluation would be similar. Then the problem becomes implementation, and how does the district support you with teachers who may need to be evaluated out or, you know, um, attendance issues, discipline issues, financial issues, what are those issues that need to be dealt with? It would be the same. And then where you can get caught up if you're from a different area, like Mr. Dudley was from Dallas and I'm from California, your process, there may be some things about how you organize or how you do funding that we may not know about. And you need to just mentor or provide the coaching for the person instead of asking them. So I think therein lies the issue too, you know, how new people are brought in, how they're mentored, how they're supported, and how they're dealt with. Mm -hmm. Management. You know, how, did, how did you deal with a bad, or oh, I shouldn't say, a teacher that wasn't looked well, you, upon as uh, really doing the job? Okay. Well, um, going in initially, I just do walkthroughs and had all the administrators doing the walkthroughs, you know, looking to see if you're doing your lesson plans, how you evaluate mm -hmm. and working with them, and then just start really using the evaluation process that's there. I don't think you necessarily need a new evaluation. You just need to do what's there, the one that's already there. Do the walkthroughs, do the assessments, look at their background, and then try to provide them with the staff development, and then you move like that. I think in any system it's difficult to remove a teacher, but what you can do is make suggestions. Maybe the teacher needs to move to another school, maybe the school doesn't work, and have a relationship with them and work with them in that way. I think while I was in the system, I might have gotten rid of a few teachers, but it it was a very long, lengthy, 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 lengthy process. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so it's hard. on that same part of the administration piece, uh, when I think about it, uh, there was a time when Jefferson actually had failed. And the federal government said, okay, yeah. fine, you have to divide the schools into different schools. Am I mm -hmm. right? Am I right? Well, can you explain that? Well, <laughs> I think they consistently and do were, that. And were you there doing that particular thing? No, time? I wasn't. That had been done. Well, you know, where they start all over, they flatten it, and they start all over. Mm -hmm. That had been done before I got back to right? Title One. yeah. You know, how many, and so how many schools did they make? That was there the There were boys four and the schools, girls. yeah. That there was the boys and girls. Mm -hmm. There's a young men's academy, young women's academy, science and technology, and fine arts. So they broke it down in four schools, and they started the testing mm -hmm. over. But one of the exciting things, I think, when I was there, I noticed that we were no longer at the bottom of the barrel. Mm -hmm. We had moved up a few. <laughs> and okay. I thought, that was awesome. And so um, I have that to my credit. And I think that could continue. Um, me personally, if I were, you know, responsible for Jefferson, I, I always say this ever since I've been in town, I would just make it a great school. I think too much innovation where there's so many problems is not a good thing. I think a lot of change and a lot of innovation is not a good thing. I think it should be a great school where the kids can read and do math and just have all the basic stuff and do it to a high level mm -hmm. and then move those kids on. I just think when kids are having reading problems and writing problems, a lot of change and 
creativeness. It's maybe yeah. not what we should be doing. You know what we're going to do, but I tell you what we're going to do. I'm thinking maybe that rather than just not letting her go, we're going to take advantage of while she's here. I agree. We're just going to take a short break, and we're going to bring you back. And oh, my God. We're gonna talk, now we're <laughs> we thought you were leaving, huh? Yeah. Nah, we're going to no we'll now talk about Jefferson High School and any other things we want to bring to the board, and then start talking about what what uh, Dr. Crew should be looking at and some mm -hmm. of the solutions to the problems, okay? Okay. Okay, we'll take a short break, folks, and we'll be right back. A little change in venue. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks, again to Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Uh, my co-host this time around is Bob Williams. He's here with us today. And, and our guest today is, uh, is Dr. Harris, who is uh, probably the, associated with the largest school district we have in the state of Oregon. We've been talking about issues on education as it relates to the school district, I mean, the state school district, whatever. And, and uh, so what we were going to do was going to maybe go to the next show and, and do it as part of a talking about Jefferson and maybe talk about solutions, et cetera, et cetera, to be handed over, if you will, to the governor and to the legislature and to you, the people who voted those folks in, and also to the new, newly hired uh, uh, chief educator, uh, Dr. Crew. And so this might be a benefit to all of us, for that matter. And hopefully, maybe one of these days, Dr. Crew can come on. And, I would love and it. And can be there. And, <laughs> I and want to be there. <laughs> and be a benefit, because it's going to take us all, right? It is. It's going to take an entire village, i.e., the state of Oregon, to get this thing all done. So we had just left off. And as you know, we were, well, it was always coming back to Jefferson High School. Again, it's the largest, it was the largest school from the largest school district. And it's always the Jefferson High School piece, you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the failures, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So what we thought we'd do now and do now, not to say, that there are issues around the state with other schools, but this is something that if we can solve this issue, I think it will it'll be a better place to live, if you mm -hmm. will. So with that, we're going to get right into the Jefferson High School piece. And Bob, you had a question that you yes. were just holding on. I'm chomping at the bits right. for this one because I know the answer. And I have friends that teach in, pub, in, in grade school, middle school, and at Jefferson and other high schools. And one of the things that I noticed is that everyone talk about the grade point average of students at Jefferson. And I'm going, they don't come to Jefferson and they get dumbed down. Everyone is trying to lift them up. Yeah. So explain to me what you're getting into Jefferson. Are they educated in grade school or middle school and come in there and then decide not to work? Or are they, you're finding that there's a shortcoming when they get to you? Ooh, that's a really hard question. And <laughs> so I don't know that I can answer it, but what I can say is there needs to be more collaboration between the teachers at the high school and the middle school. So whatever Jefferson gets is what happens at the elementary school. Mm. So the, the you know you you start off in pre-K or kindergarten, and you're assessed them. And in California, we, we focus much more on standards, I think, than mm. they do here. But there's a series of standards in every grade that uh, you need to achieve 
and then you come into the high school. So if those competencies aren't gained and maintained in elementary school, we that's what we get when you come to high school. Mm. We, we can't recreate it. it, it's already there. Right. So when you come in and you're assessed, that's what we work with and we work for that for four years. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then you can lift it up. And see, the reason I say is because I have had a, a good friend that taught seventh grade mm -hmm. and he and his wife separated so the daughter was with the wife and when she graduated, she received all of these honors. Mm -hmm. But she came to visit him and she couldn't compete with his seventh grade curriculum. Oh, okay. And he was like, what are they teaching you over there? And so he and I were talking, and that's one of the things that I, you know, one of the things that he noticed it. Over the summer, he began to educate her. She, it was like a new, another light lit up mm -hmm. in her during the summer. So she went to high school, and at least she was able to deal with what was going on there. Otherwise, she would have been lost. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I'm, that's what made me ask you uh -huh. that question. So, regarding. so what you're actually asking is, are the schools in the Northeast, let's say the Jefferson Cluster? Mm -hmm competency is the same as they would be at another school and they actually should be mm -hmm. but we have no guarantees how the teachers are doing the grading and the system is you know the standard is there and how the teachers teach to it you know we can measure it as much as we can but when you take the standardized <coughs> test those are all the same so those should level out well in in the, in the elementary and the in uh, in in, uh, ju in junior high are teachers looked upon as to kids passing through if the kid passes to get through, they are looked upon favorably versus if they hold someone And I, I back. never knew about that. <laughs> I'm just asking. I don't know about that part. Yeah. There was no discussion. There was never any discussion, like Bob was saying? No, I there don't think there was a discussion. Even at the administrative level? No. How about the school board level? Well, what the school board looks looking at, that I would think they would be looking at the test scores themselves. Test scores themselves. I think the curriculum department would be looking at the competencies, the portfolios, and all of those things. That would be the curriculum. The principal she's looking at is the teacher teaching. Are the students meeting these areas, or are the students able to do the work? Are they in class? Or, you know, mm -hmm. are they attending? And those kind of things. So it's a system that goes all the way up. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's the parent involvement to check, just like your friend, you, you know, can you write? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, or can you do this math? And, mm -hmm. you know, that therein lies the answer. It's the outcomes. I know I mentor a student with Step It Up. And just in the last couple of months I've been mentoring her, I've been seeing some improvement. I think you have to be checking your student. Mm -hmm. And the teachers and the principal, everybody has to be checking on everybody else to make sure these competencies are met. And so I think that's what you're speaking to, yeah. for standards. Now, some of the things that, in terms of input to the school system, like Bob was saying, what kind, what kind of students are going to Jeff, if you will, there were two entities within the Jefferson IE area that people always have, have identified with. Mm -hmm. That is Head Start. I'd like to ask you about what role did Head okay. Start play? And secondly, SEI, and what role did they play? Etc. Mm -hmm. And was that and what were those roles positive or whatever? Oh, so you know I'm only going to say positive. Yes. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, when I started teaching, um, when you talked about, um, what, I don't know, what did you say, the preschool program, yeah, which yeah, program yeah, were you yeah, talking about? Start, head start. Input, okay, input. so when I started teaching, they had something called follow through, which was the same federal government. Would, would help the kids right. and they had, we right. had two instructional assistants right. and we had open pod and all of that. Well, I think those programs really do help students. But over time, they've cut back on some of those programs. You don't have as much support hmm. for those Title I students. But there are Title I dollars. Now, that's something I think um, Rudy Crew could look at. You know, how does Oregon spend its Title I dollars? And do the Title I dollars get to the students that need it the most or the students that are supposed to get that help? Because with those dollars, uh, you provide extra support, uh, stronger teachers, more curriculum, books, and et cetera. So I think that is an area in Oregon that needs to be looked at more deeply. What I do find in California, there's a lot more oversight and um, really looking at are, are those dollars getting to those students. Um, you mentioned SEI. SEI and Tony Hobson, total partners with Jefferson High School. And I think that um, I can't really measure because um, I don't do the evaluation in, in, in that program, but I think they have a strong partnership with the wraparound program, really trying to provide the overall support to the students. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure how much curriculum support they provide. What but does I do. that mean? Uh, what does that well, mean? Well, I mean, it means they're there. They have like family groups. 
you know, of the students. They have some leaders of the students in the school, right? Let's say there was a person that worked with the freshmen, the sophomores, and the seniors, okay. etc. They, they like family. Yeah, they have mm -hmm. a contract with Portland Public Schools. I don't think the principal necessarily work with that contract. They have it directly with the school district, okay. but they're on okay. the site. And then um, one of the things I noticed that Tony was doing, he was trying to meet with the principals to talk to them about what was going on. And so that's been a strong community piece. And mm -hmm. the effectiveness is that we can't say because it's, it's convoluted. We, what, how can you say which part was SEI and which part was the school district? Mm -hmm. So if they win, they all win. Mm -hmm. If they lose, they all lose. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to look at it in a holistic kind of way. Was there a similar partnership with Head Start? Because in all due respect, Ron Herndon at one point in time, who basically put together Head Start, mm -hmm. in fact, he's president of the National mm -hmm. Head right Start. Right now? Yes. Oh, okay. And the, the idea His that name he, keeps coming up, yeah, so he's very, very What about him? What, was he at the table from the standpoint? Did you, I've never you, met Ron Herndon. You never had that to mm -hmm. I've only read articles Even as, about as him. Even as an administrator? I mean, there was I've no, never met Ron Herndon. No desire, maybe? Yeah, I have a desire to meet anybody that got the knowledge or the right. information. Right. He's somebody I definitely want to meet because mm -hmm. when I read what he has to say, he is saying the same kind of things about achievement that I'm saying, that community needs to be involved, the parents need to be involved, the collaboratives need to be involved. Mm -hmm. I feel you've got something to say. <laughs> because they, this is something that they've been saying since I got here. What's that? What's that uh, the community need to be involved, the parents need to be involved. You know, and the truth of the matter is, what I've seen in Portland is that the parents send their kids to school and turn them over exactly. to the teacher. And I'm out of this for this eight to 10 hours while I go and try and make uh, money so we'll have a roof over our head and bread on mm -hmm. the table. Mm -hmm. uh, and the teachers and all those other talking heads are saying the parents need to be involved. But from eight to five, I'm at work. When, am, when is my involvement? Well, uh, I think the involvement can take many forms, but if you never show up and you're never on a PTA and you're never on a site mm -hmm. council and you're not coming to parent nights, you're not giving me any hours. And I think the school has to be willing to have that involvement. So mm -hmm. I can tell you I want you to be involved, but I can make it so that you're never going to be right. involved because there's never a way. Uh, even maybe with sports, but there's never a way for me to really communicate. I think there has to be, the businesses have to give the parents time off, the school has to be willing to be flexible, mm -hmm. and we have to do it in different ways. I mean, we have to do it when those parents can, can be involved. We have to be communicating in many, many ways, and I think therein lies the problem. What is the willingness of the staff or the teacher and community mm -hmm. to really want these parents Sometimes I think they don't really want them. It's like, that's great, that's except right. when we have a problem, mm -hmm. then we want you to come get this kid and take them on. So that's a really, um, I mean, the research is very clear. Parents that involve kids do better. Just, that's, that's just so clear forever. And if you're not involved, it's, it, it can just not happen for your student. Right. So it's, it, that's, that, that's the language, that's the right horn they should be blowing. But how are they doing? What are the strategies that will make this happen? So I think that's the bigger problem in, mm -hmm. to me. Okay, let me, let's get into another area. Again, again we're talking to Dr. Crew right now, okay? He, oh, he's on the phone. Yeah, he's right, he's right here. He's right here. <laughs> we're going to send him the tape. Right here. Now, <laughs> now, as you know, here in the largest school district in, in the state, at one point in time, it had probably one of the best folk ed program right. in, in the state, mm -hmm. okay? And then up jumps. Portland Community College, and in my estimation, it took Voc Ed out of the high schools, out of the schools mm -hmm. here in the, in, the, in the Portland Public Schools. Outside of, of the Portland Public Schools, you've got Voc Ed in a number of these school districts, mm -hmm. but you don't have Voc Ed here. And I, I contend that uh, one of the reasons why we're having a, a number of problems with, with some of our low-achieving students is that they don't have those hands-on experiences, and that's what Voc Ed did. I'm talking about wood shop, mechanics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, was there ever discussions about uh, the lack of, uh, of folk ed in the schools? And in fact, one of the ones that I was really excited when back when was they had the TJ room, and uh, they the kids were basically doing lunch and things of that nature, mm -hmm. and learning how to work in these so-called fast foods enterprises mm -hmm. aspect of it. And it was a very successful program. They took it out. It was in the basement of Jefferson High School. Yes, I and heard then, that. Again, and then, you know, all those shops on the side yeah. that are closed, if you will, mm -hmm. and auto mechanics, they had wood shops. I remember so, when they worked on my yeah. truck. Right. So really? what, what, was, it, was that ever a discussion when you got here about No, it was not a discussion, but there have been a couple of parents and yourself who've talked to me a little bit about that. I do see a need for that, so mm -hmm. I'm not sure 
who should pick that up, if it should be the high schools or the junior colleges or community group. The one thing that I know that we did do is there was a program where people who wanted to be carpenters came in and ran a program where some of the young people at Jefferson participate, and they really enjoyed that. So On campus? I think it was off campus. They would come and do some of the plans, and then they would go off, and that went really well. Um, I don't know. I just think that's a good thing. But then you have limited funds now, and you have to make certain kinds of choices. So you're like, who, which part of that do you want? Mm -hmm. So I think that's the funding is the issue with that. Well, it's something that Bob and I, we, yeah. we tried to do. You weren't there at the time, but we, we basically were putting our hats together and trying to figure out how could we get the trades involved in the school and put together an apprenticeship program. Right. Remember that, Bob? Right. But they didn't receive it well. No. And to give you an idea, as a member of the TriMet Board, I found out that the federal government has a program that they pay they will give you funds to implement teaching kids about transit. I like mm. that. Mechanics and stuff like that. Uh, well, you no. mean like I mean, uh, bus driving? It's more than that. How do, see, everyone see, the only people you see really is the bus driver. Mm -hmm. But you have to have a general manager, you have to have someone that directs Finance, the bus ride, okay. financing, all of that. But what about and the so, mechanics? I mean, no And so the mechanics think. as well. Okay, you know, fixing it up. But they give you the money to, to, put, to together put together a in curriculum. Place, a total and, program. A total program. Wow. Mm -hmm. We have to talk. I well, actually no, she's I, not there. No, okay. no, we can, we, no, we can, but do we can this. still no, talk. We need to we talk to Dr. Crew. That's what you're yeah. talking to right now. But we well, can still for Dr. Crew, I have some questions. You know, I have some questions for him as far as what uh, questions give him do some you have solutions. You know, well, what are the concerns? You my concerns is you've been given a mandate, but where are you going to start? Are you going to start in Portland? Or are you going to start in Bend, Oregon? But where should he start? Uh -huh. I mean, we got to give him some solution. Where yeah. should he start? He should off? look at all the districts and uh, find out yeah. what's who is which districts are not functioning well, and the worst one is where he should start. Mm -hmm. He shouldn't start at the, at the easy one. He shouldn't he shouldn't be going to Lake Oswego. You know uh, they're pretty well set. Uh, he should be coming to Portland or one of the other school districts that are having problems as far as keeping kids in school, as far as a oh, curriculum. High school curriculum. Yeah, as far as uh, what's the education process in the elementary schools? How are they, why are these kids not succeeding once they get to high school? Is it because they weren't given this opportunity in, in grade school? Well, you know, along that same note is that Julia Brim Edwards, who at one point in time used to be on school, the school board, board member, yes, and she's on that super board, if you will, mm -hmm. and I think she was she was also part of the selection process of Dr. Yeah, Drew. she was. She was so, the chair of that, you know, and she had all kinds of background and history, and I think in many ways that's one of the reasons why the governor sort of put it, put a mandate in terms of what are some of the areas that he's directing crew to look at, i.e. Uh, lack of graduation and all kinds of little things of that nature and making sure that, that people not only get a college degree, mm -hmm. but also blue collar stuff. Mm -hmm. you know I mean, so those are some of his charges. And, and the thing is, is that uh, I agree with you, but, but the key is the crew, need, he got he to do a fast track. He's going to be here for three years. That's what he's been, that's what he's been told. He's going to be here three years and he's going to put another assistant on there. They're going to be spending a little over $400,000 a year on that piece. Wow. And so hopefully things are supposed to be moving within three years. Then my question now becomes, we elected a superintendent of public instructions, and I understand that she's resigned uh, because uh, Super Crew is now taking over, and he's right. evidently made her job substandard. Uh, but well, she's not going to be there anymore. She's not going to be there yeah. anymore. So evidently he's going to take over her job. And I don't see how he continued to do what she was supposed to do. I'm, from what, you know, as, as one of the articles said, she was, uh, what was the words they used? Ceremonial. Ceremonial position. Well, it's kind of hard to change the system in Oregon. Well, I would agree with that. And, and I would also say... And I feel this way about all systems. I, I don't think she should be so pushed to the side. I think that there should be a way to, to receive some of the knowledge that is there. Because she mm -hmm. did have a, a connection with some of the events and things that she did. She was honoring some of the schools that did well. I think there's some valuable information. 
And not only that, but I think we should have more care with how we um, release people who have done work and done a good job. Mm -hmm. I think just trashing them to the side is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. And we say we want to make a difference in school, but we're modeling abusive behavior. And we're trashing people without due process or acknowledgement for a job well done. I think there should be a little more care given to how we transition and also um, how we take the backlog of knowledge on what they have done. You know, I think to think that you're so bright that you can really ignore all of the intelligentsia right. that has gone on <laughs> is not a really bright thing at all because you're going to come up against those very same problems. And the, to me, the brightest people would be the ones who can deal with that and pick up that knowledge and stand on their shoulders and then move forward. Well, you know, on that same point for both of you, that matter, uh, I, I agree with you because Susan was there. It was a second term. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It was a second term. She had two and a half years left for her second term, and uh, she had to retain some knowledge right. of what's going on. Well, she knows about the schools. Yes. She's studying that data. Yes. Uh, she has some programs that have been for it. They have. Uh, she, has a staff. she has a staff. They they have these um, coaches in the schools. Mm -hmm. I have one that work with Title One. There's a lot of information there that could be helpful for Rudy Cruz. So I hope one of the things he will do is look to see what's present and how can he take the information that's there and build upon it and come up with programs that will enhance and not just be destructive about it. And are you also suggesting maybe that she should have been retained at least be from I an I think she should have been, point, been retained on that board, on that board, as an interim, as a consultant, as a consultant or, or as a person who could really spend time putting those reports together to support mm -hmm. him. And it would validate not only her work, but validate her as a person. And mm -hmm. I think we as a people, we need to look at how we do things in terms of transition. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that you find in Oregon is that they, uh, when some new one new come in, they trash the whole system and start anew. And instead of you, and I always said, if you have a will, why go invent a will? All you have to do is ask spokes to make it true. Well, see, I'm agreeing and, with I'm agreeing with you, but I'm also mm -hmm. saying that the same problems are there, even though you brought on a new right a new yeah. driver. So the my, same trunk is having a problem. Mm -hmm. So maybe bringing in the right. other person as coach, you kind of keep them on the team to give you some of the wisdom of the system would be helpful. Because one of the things I found myself was the problems were still here that you've been dealing with. And it would have been nice to have had the area director from before work with instead of you putting her to the side and having them work together more in a collaborative teaming kind right. of a way to make the difference well, for the Well, supposedly there's, there's going to be a team, so to speak, because in all due respect, it, was, it wasn't just Governor Kitzhopper. It was the entire legislature well, who represents the people who said this is the direction we're going to go. And in all due respect, it goes back to the people who voted her in this second time around. I and mean, I'm okay they, with that. You know, you know I'm totally fine so, with that. I, you know, that was just my opinion. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, that was my opinion. Yeah. You know, I, I got a ballot, and it, and her name was on it, and yeah. I marked it. So that's that's the way that go. But what I'm saying is, I hope that uh, Dr. Crew, when he when he began to 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 make his decisions, he don't throw out everything that's been developed and start his anew because in three years all you will have is something new. Exactly. It won't we don't be know functioning. if that's going to work either, yeah. right? Because <laughs> it's got you the know. same stubborn type community that mm -hmm. you're dealing with. You're not changing, it. You're well, not this changing a, the mindset. You would, you would say, though, that this is a bold move. Yes. It's a very bold move. I mean, uh, which, uh, which part of it? And from the standpoint of now you don't have an existing superintendent elected by the people. Yes, it's totally a bold move yeah, you know, for this so, state, right? Yeah, and, and it's kind of like saying so many words, and then he's looking at three years. I mean, because he's pretty well saying, I mean, now that might be another agenda from the standpoint of saying, that's after dangerous three years, too. we're going to look at this thing again. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is that uh, this person who he's hired, Dr. Dr. Crew, uh, has some major experience, man, education Absolutely. experience. Absolutely. Well, everybody and, they're brought uh, in had major experience. No, we this guy here, this is... This they is, don't come in done. Yeah, we, <laughs> and, and we have the matrix. And he's going to be stepping on... He, sto he stepped on a lot of toes where he was. I mean, mm -hmm. he had the largest yeah. school district under his wing in you mean New, in New York. York. Yeah. One million, one million kids. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of folks. Well, I think what I would also like to look at in Rudy Cruz's background is how was he in the developmental age? I think it's you, you can come in and, and be heavy-handed, but how are you on massaging the edges and going deep and looking at the problems and being able to take what's there and transform it so that it's useful to you because it's the same budget, it's the same people. So I would be interested in um, 
looking at that and also watching his moves here in Oregon, how well, he's going to massage let, that. Let me give, let me let me throw out this statement throw here it in, out. in the Oregonian, which was uh, which was on the, uh, the May the 30th of 2012. Anyway, this last paragraph talking to the first chief education officer selected. Mm. Uh, this was a quote from basically from the Oregonian by, by Julia Brim Edwards. It says, "In seeking the right person for the job, Brim Edwards said." The panel looked for an educator with proven leadership skills that yielded results, a demonstrated ability to pull off major system change, expertise in both public schools and higher education, and excellent communication skills. Mm -hmm. So we can look that for says that. it all. Yeah. Kind of like says it all. Now the key is that hey. exactly it doesn't say it all for me because I'm still saying. I would like to know how you transition right. and, and what was left behind. Like when you can burn up the house, but what got left behind? And how did you smooth that out so that those systems are working? I don't know that I know that based on that comment, and I haven't done the research myself to go back to talk to the people that were there. And so I'm going to be looking at that from, from my perspective. Well, you know, in all due respect, you know, we had a, we had a committed person. Who, someone was selected to do the job. And then all of a sudden, right they, in the middle of the screen, they got rid of it. I know. I'm talking about Dr. Harris. Oh, oh you're talking I'm about talking me. About Dr. Harris. <laughs> well, I mean, we had, we, we, had, we had a school that was working. where kids were playing basketball. Things were happening. I mean, they, she approached you, you the fundraising yeah. piece. Uh, she was going around various businesses and this, that, and the other, and 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 doing outreach and getting folks involved, getting parents involved. And all of a sudden, bang! And in fact, now as I look at Dr. Crew, how he was picked up, and made it very clear, Dr. Crew said, "Okay, fine." I'll do the hard work, but hey, Governor, you have to handle all of the he politics. He did say that, you know, that. And unfortunately, in your end of it, uh, Vicki, who was a superintendent. And I think you do need somebody to handle those politics. I think as case, long as Vicki was here yes, you and Barbara had, Adams, no I think I had Amen. the support. I think with uh, Carol Smith, I didn't have it. And with my she supervisor, had no support. I didn't, didn't have, have support that support Carol coming Smith. from Carol, and okay. I didn't have it so with that's Tony a big, that's a big see? So that's a big one. I should have just packed my bags when that change was made, but mm -hmm. I thought I could stay and finish working with the Doing kids, the but yeah. not always. Right. So if he's saying that and Governor Kitzhopper is going to smooth that out, then he's going to have a nice ride. <laughs> yeah, yes. well, I, 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 I take wish, my head off too. I wish we got a chance to talk uh, to talk about what happened uh, down in Salem uh, this week. Oh yeah. The, uh, Can you talk about that? Uh, the Oregon uh, Commission on Black Let's Affairs. Let's do that next week. Oh, okay. Maybe uh, we'll have a little bit more insight. We, because we, uh, you know what we figured our perception was. Right? Yeah, but uh, I talked to uh, that person on the way in. Oh, you did. And they said they did send a letter to the yeah. governor and to and all. Right. But he didn't get uh, any uh, But uh, that wasn't uh, the reason. And then it was some other one of, underlying. One we okay. consider doing that next week. Okay. Exactly. I would Maybe definitely get, watch that. I'm might curious get the person about here. that. Yeah. We're going to get in that person I'll here. I'll try. Well, it look like we're at the point now that. I can't that, believe uh, it's over. We want to we wanna thank you. <laughs> oh, it's my pleasure. And I'm excited. Hopefully, the governor, the, the people of Oregon, and Dr. Cruz are going to be welcome and hopefully see if we can resolve some of these issues that we have because, you know, our future is based on our youth and our education system in Oregon. It's very important to get businesses and things of that nature. Is yeah, this okay. going to be on YouTube? This is going to be on YouTube. Okay. Okay, good. All so right. For those that didn't see it and want their friends to see yes. it, uh, they should go to YouTube and take a look at this. Very much so. Well, folks, we want to thank you very much for being a part of this. And Dr. Harris, thank you very oh, much. Oh, it's my pleasure. I mean, the public really appreciates you. I the appreciate it. Thank the, you. The Oregon Voters Digest appreciates you, thank and I'm you. sure Bob does too. Oh, and uh, as George Page always said, back to what you believe in. <laughs> thank you very much.